and welcome to this Astranti YouTube video. In this video, we're going to look at a typical kind of question that you might face in your BA2 exam. This is going to focus on labor variances, a topic that students often struggle with. But not only is learning about variances now really important for your certificate level exams, it's also going to be really important as you progress through your SEMA studies. And if you do like this video, please like and subscribe at the bottom of the screen and visit the website www.astranti.com where we've got plenty of other information relating to the SEMA certificate level that you can sign up for such as our EPK question packs where we are looking at the various different topics and asking very specific questions, some easy to test your comprehension, some harder to test your application, and also some mock exams that are free to use as well. So what we're gonna do in this particular video is work through this question and explain how to answer it, how to use the information. And we can see that it is indeed a variance question. Of course, I've already mentioned it's going to be about variances. And if we look at the requirement line, it's asking us to calculate the direct labor rate variance and the direct labor efficiency variance. And this is very typical of the kind of question you might face, but also the kind of thing that you might be expected to do as a management accountant, because what this involves is breaking down a variance, a cost variance, in this case labor, and identifying whether it was through lack of efficiency or paying too much. That's why you spent more than you planned on doing. And of course, identifying that there is a variance isn't enough. You have to take steps to improve the variance. And so by doing this, you help narrow it down. Are you paying too much for your labor or is your labor not working effectively and efficiently enough? So let's take a look at the question. The standard costs, so the standard cost being how much something should cost to produce based on your budget, etc., for product W are based on a budgeted sales volume of 1,400 units. So that's how many should have been produced. And uh, for one unit of product W, 25 labor hours are required. So that's how much time is uh, spent to create each unit. And the cost for labor is $4 per hour. And the company produced and sold 1,250 units. So that's the actual number sold. So I'll just write that down here. That's the actual number of units. And that's gonna be very important in our calculation. And the actual costs for this production period was $128,250.33,750 labor hours were used. So we've got all the information we need now to calculate the labor rate variance and the labor efficiency variance. And we're gonna start by looking at the direct labor rate variance. And the direct labor rate variance is the difference between the standard cost of the actual hours used and the actual cost of the actual hours used. So what I mean by this is we actually used 33,750 hours and we actually spent $128,250 on those labor hours. So what we now need to do is calculate how much this amount of hours should actually have cost us. How much would 33,750 hours actually have cost us at the standard rate of $4 per hour? So what we need to do here is take the actual hours, which is 33,750, and multiply it by $4, because that's the $4 per hour rate. And that gives us a total 
of $135,000. So what we can actually see is that it should have cost us more to use 33,750 labor hours. So it's actually a favorable variance. And we can find the specific variance by deducting the actual labor cost, which was $128,250. And that gives us a favorable direct labor rate variance of $6,750. Based on our standard costs, it should have cost us $135,000 to work 33,750 labor hours, but it actually cost us $6,750 less than that. So that's a favorable variance because we spent less than our standard cost would suggest. So now that's narrowed down our options. It cannot be option B, because option B has a direct labor rate variance of $10,000 adverse, and it can't be D because D has a direct labor rate variance of 11,750 favorable. So it must be A or C. But of course we don't know yet because we haven't calculated the direct labor efficiency variance. And that's what we're going to do in the next step. Now, the direct labor efficiency variance is the difference between the standard number of hours required to produce the actual amount of products that we produce versus the actual amount of labor hours used. So essentially what we need to look at here is based on our standard labor time of 25 direct labor hours per unit, how many hours we should have needed to produce 1,250 units. So what we can do here is multiply that number of units, so 1,250 by 25. And this will give us how many hours producing 125 units should 1,250 units should have taken us. And that comes to 31,250 hours. So it should only have taken us 31,250 hours to produce 1,250 units. So of course there is a variance here and we can deduct the actual hours to find that variance. And this is a negative. So it's adverse, it's in brackets, and it's an adverse variance of 2,500 hours. Now to find the actual cost of this variance, we then need to multiply this figure by the labor rate, which is $4 per hour. So we multiply an adverse variance of 2,500 units by $4 as the labor rate, and that gives us our direct labor efficiency variance of $10,000, and it's an adverse variance. So that is in option C, which means that the correct answer here is option C. The direct labor rate variance is $6,750 favorable, and the direct labor efficiency variance is at $10,000 adverse. And what this now means is that we're actually paying a decent rate for our labor because we have a favorable variance, but our labor is not efficient. So as a management accountant, what we'd then be suggesting is ways in which we can improve the efficiency within the organization, perhaps by training staff in uh, using certain machines or in certain procedures to improve their productivity, because that's the main reason why there will be an adverse cost variance for labor. It's not because of the rate. The rate is actually favorable. It's the efficiency. Labor is not efficient within this organization. So thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this video, found it useful and understood the process, how we worked through calculating the answer. 
If you would like to see more of these sorts of videos, please like and subscribe and visit the website www.astranti.com for more information about certificate questions, those uh, practice kits based on the study texts and the mock exams, which are all available for free when you sign up on the Astranti website. So thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again soon.